Hello and welcome everybody. What is going on? So this is me TV and it's gonna be the Bundesliga preview for this Bundesliga season. Now I'm probably a bit late with this um because it's gonna come out like literally like a few hours um before the actual first match happens. So I'm a little bit late with this, but I just wanted to take myself a little bit of time just to really look at all the teams, just look at how they've played, just to get a bit of information, you know, just to write a little bit of information down and then um give it like an accurate um an accurate prediction. Or I'll try to be as accurate as I possibly can. So here is my prediction for this Bundesliga season. Like I said, this is all my prediction. This could be wrong. This, I could be totally off. Uh, and maybe I am totally off. But so far, I do think, like, from my list and overall, just from what I've seen and from what I've um, read and um, watched, I think I'm not that far off. But let's actually get to this. So, I won't start with, like, the top six first. I'll go from the bottom up. So, I'll go, with, like, from the 18th place all the way to the first place not from the first to the 18th so we'll start off with the last place last place for me has to be Freiburg now um Freiburg uh, they're, they're the new boys they're the new boys and as, as a new boys I don't expect them to I honestly don't expect them to do that well so for me you know you're looking at you're looking at relegation here I honestly I, I can't see it um, I can't see you guys stay so that's why for me Freiburg they're gonna go down and you know it's a bit of a shame but it is what it is you know you're not you're not always going to be the newcomers that are going to last in the um, Bundesliga you're not going to do that this time sorry but that's not going to happen next up you have um on 17th place you have Frankfurt now Frankfurt they've they're always doing well one season and like bad another season but I just think that this season is going to be the season where they do bad again and um, I think this it's going to be that bad that it can't recuperate from it and that they're going to go down. That they're going to be 17th place and ultimately, yeah, I think they're going to get relegated ultimately. Um, but that's just the way it is. They do have some excellent players, but they don't have a team. I don't think they'll have a team. I think you can't have a team full of individuals, full of, you know, some good players and then the rest of them being bad you need to have a much better balance and that's what you don't have so that's where they're going down next up ingolstadt 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 um yeah ingolstadt is a tricky case because you know they had a few promising players they've lost a few promising players so right now you'd probably say that you know you wouldn't last in the Bundesliga and that's why I don't think they will last in the Bundesliga because I think they lost some of the promising players and from what I've seen they've not really bought anything uh, anyone substantial so for me you know but, um, English that they will go down um, well they'll be on 16th place next up on 15th place Darmstadt Darmstadt avoiding the drop once again ladies and gentlemen they are avoiding the drop once again and I think it's just because you know last season you kind of saw it, how they played they, re they really are a group you know they're, they're really they're a good team not they're not um, great individuals but they're a good team and I think that's just going to help them stay in the Bundesliga and that's why you know um, yeah I do think they're going to stay this season so next up on 14th place Hoffenheim yeah um, I had a lot of high hopes for Hoffenheim a few years ago but you know, I want to say high hopes of you know getting into like the seventh, eighth places, you know, staying there consistently. But that project, that's that's finished. You know, that, that project is ultimately finished, and um, yeah, I, I, I can't see them getting anything higher than 14th place. But next up, 13th place, Augsburg. Augsburg, yes, they are a tricky case. Um, you know, they've, they've done relatively well lately. Last season, of course, they had a lot of struggles, but that's with like obviously the Europa League being there as well. But um, you're looking at you know you're looking at um, Vinsley has gone now, and the players you know are they really gonna play the same under different coaches? Vinsley obviously he was a tactical genius, so I don't think that's gonna be the case. But I think the players will try to you know sort of come together and try and reach 13th place, and that's why I think Augsburg will get 13th place. Next up, Werder Bremen, our first opponent. So I put them on 12th place. Now Werder Bremen, they're not a bad team. But I wouldn't put them as a good team either. They have you know, a few really good players, but that's not enough. I mentioned that you, you, I don't, you, to get higher, you need to have a great team or a good team at least. And um, they have a few gr good individuals, but they're not quite a good team. And that's why for me, they're 12th. You know, pretty safe. Next up, you have Cologne on uh, sorry, just Cologne on 11th. Um, you know they're, they're not looking bad. They're not looking bad. They're not looking good. They, they, like I said, they're a team. They, yeah, yeah. I put them as a team. They're a team, 
but that's literally it. They're just a team right now. They're not good. They're not a good team. They're not a bad team. They're just a team, and that's what I think they'll ultimately be at around 11th place. Um, next up, number 10, you have Red Bull. Yay, Red Bull on 10th place. Um, yeah, I don't think they're gonna get anything higher than 10th. I don't think they're gonna get that much lower than 10th. I think you know, obviously, this is the first season in the Bundesliga and the project a Red Bull. Um, no, I'm sort of say Rasenball. What? I don't actually know what the translation is in English, but Rasenballsport, uh, Leipzig. Um, you know, you're looking at them and you're thinking to yourself, yes, you know, they, they, you're looking at it and you're thinking, yeah, they, they do have the money to invest, but they haven't really invested in anything. They wanted Mbolo, they didn't get him. They wanted a lot of players, they didn't get him. So right now, for me, it's just a case of it's going to be the first season in the Bundesliga. They're going to be safe this season. But um, but your know, next season or in two seasons, that's when we will see the real you know, spending spirit. I don't think that's gonna happen this season because I mean, the season the transfer window is basically over already. But I think give it a year or two, and then we'll see them spend a lot of money. When I say a lot of money, I mean you know, you're looking at 100 million, 120 million, 150 million in one transfer window. So this season, 10th, next season, probably top six. You know, that, that's how much of a jump I think they're gonna do. But we'll talk about that in next season. <laughs> next up. Hamburg on 9th. I've seen a lot of people put Hamburg a lot, a lot higher. And I've just been wondering, you know, they've, they've done some excellent signings. They've actually done really well this summer, which is actually surprising. You know, you're looking at the management in Hamburg. Actually really surprising that they've done so well. So, looking at Hamburg, um, I put them at 9th, which is, you know, I normally always put Hamburg a lot lower because I just know how they are. I've, I've got cousins in Hamburg. Who I know, like every before the season starts, they're always like, "Yeah, we're gonna make it to the Europa League, we're gonna make it to the Champions League," and then they're always fighting with relegation. Uh, but this season, I honestly think that they've done well. This season, I've honestly, I honestly do think that they've done well, and that's what I think they can get to ninth place. Next up, eighth place, Hertha Berlin, the capital. The capital, not Union, nope, Hertha. Um, Hertha Berlin on ninth. Oh, sorry, eighth. Place. Now, last season they were fantastic for such a long period until they started to fall off, which is, which is kind of a shame. But um, you know, it just shows you that they have the consistency, they have a decent team, and now it's just time to prove it again. I think eighth place for them would be would be a really good job. You know, that's that's the kind of position you can be proud of. Really, you can honestly be proud of. Yeah. So next up, seventh place, Mainz, 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 Mainz. Yes, Mainz. Um, honestly, 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 they haven't really done that good in the shopping. Yeah, you know, they haven't do, done, their shopping hasn't been that good. But I always see them as a team that underperforms from what the players are worth. I always feel like the players that they have, they could perform a lot better. And I think that you know, every that's what every season I do feel them like in that kind of position as like sixth, seventh, eighth around that place. And I feel the same thing this season as well. So I put them on seventh place, minds. Um, I just feel they're gonna do well again. But how well we'll see, you know. But I feel like that's around the place that they have seventh, eighth, ninth, ten around that place. So that's why I put mine seventh. Now we're getting into the top six places. Now obviously sixth place and fifth place have Europa League, and then top four, um, or should I say top three, guaranteed to have Champions Champions League, and then the fourth place also has Champions League or Europa League. Now the Europa League place number six, Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg is for me the number six place. Now I've written down a few key players that they have and everything. But you're looking at the squad, you're looking at last season. Obviously, last season was a major disappointment. But for me, the problem is not really the squad, it's not the team. For me, the problem is the attitude. And uh, you can't fix an attitude just over a season. You're looking at Gustavo, you know, um, they offered Gustavo the captain role if he stayed, and yet he still wants to leave. Um, you're looking at Naldo, who was the captain. He left to Schalke. You're looking at Draxler. He wanted to leave, but he was not allowed to leave. You're looking at um, you're looking at uh, Bastos. He wanted to leave, or maybe he might have already left. I don't know. I'm not too sure about that. Then you're looking at Cruiser. He was there for one season. We saw him in Telegate, um, and then he left. So a lot, they, a lot of players want to leave that club. So I don't think they're gonna play for the club, but they're still gonna try and show their individual quality. So in, in this case. You don't have a team, you have a bunch of individuals, but the individuals are just so good that they're, they're going to carry you to the 6th place in my opinion. And with Gomez in the team, 
um, that's gonna they're, they're gonna look really good. You obviously have the likes of um, Rick Ross on the left, you know, as a left, but as a left back. Then you have the likes of Blaszczykowski that they've added to the team, who I always thought was a pretty good player. Obviously, age is catching up with him, but I still think that he's a pretty good addition to the team. And then obviously, as I mentioned, the main man Draxler. Draxler for me, yo, he should be going to a top club. He should have been at Juventus for me, but that's not the case. I'm hoping that next season he can go to a big club because honestly, I always thought that he was an excellent talent. I was. Uh, like around four years ago or so I really wanted us to get him that was four years three years ago I really wanted us to get him and um, that was not the case ultimately you know I do hope that he's gonna go to a big club to really f fulfill his potential I know I'm kind of going against Wolfsburg right now but for me they've the, the kind of I don't know Wolfsburg they have the money but uh, they're so dependent on Wolfsburg you know it's not like they're actually making that much money are using that money wisely and that's why i think they ultimately you know um they're just gonna they're, gonna they're just gonna slip further and further down the table and maybe in five years they'll be in around 10th position or something like that but yeah wolfsburg like i said sixth position next up number five and top five was honestly the most difficult one i think top five is probably the most difficult thing to uh, do um but number five i went with Gladbach. I went with Gladbach, and this actually pains me to say because I out of all, all top five teams, right? After Bayern, Gladbach is probably the team that I enjoy watching the most. Um, yeah, honestly, Gladbach is probably the team I enjoy. The, of all the teams, actually, Gladbach is probably the team that I enjoy watching the most after Bayern. So for me, saying that Gladbach is favourite is a little bit of a shame because for me, you know, they're just a, they. It doesn't matter how old they are, right? Because I know they have a lot of older players, but for me, they've always been that team that looks like a child playing football. You know, just full of joy, always wanting to attack, always wanting to go forward. You, know, you just run, 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 and you'll just see where the win takes you ultimately. And, you know, that's why I always enjoy watching Gladbach play football. So I always want to see them in the Champions League or at least, you know, playing for the Champions League. But I don't think they're going to make it this season. I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, in terms of notable signings, so you know, they've gotten Kramer back, and they still have the Hoot, and uh, Raphael has been looking pretty, pretty lively. Hazard has been looking really good as well. So you have a lot of your know, younger players that play really well, and obviously under Schubert, they've been looking really well. I just don't think it's enough to get into the top four, and I think they're going to miss out on the top on the top four by like three points or so, just like very close. But um, I just can't see them making in the top four this season. I do feel that ultimately, you know. As the longer Schubert stays, the better they're gonna do. And um, this season, top five. Next season, I think probably top three. Obviously, I can't say that just yet because the transfer window hasn't happened yet. But like I said, this season, top five for me, with the key players being uh, Kramer. Not key players, but the most influential players or the mo or the players I'm looking out for are Kramer, Dahoud, and Raphael. All for different reasons. Um, next up, top four. Top four. Difficult, difficult, very difficult. Top four. Who could it be? We've got Bayern left, we've got Dortmund left, we've got Leverkusen left, and we have Schalke left. Who is top four? Top four, ladies and gentlemen, is Schalke. Top four, Schalke. And uh, this was actually quite difficult to do because, you know, the top four, I think the, the, the third and fourth position could change. I, I'd say maybe the second, third, and fourth position could change. But I think the third and fourth position is much more likely. But fourth position, I put Schalke, and the reason for that is quite simple: they have done fantastically. What well. they, they have probably, besides the two Manchester clubs, they have probably had the best transfer window um, because they haven't lost any notable players. You know, you're looking at Sané, yeah, okay, yeah. But I'm talking about you know they haven't lost any real key players. And yet they've added so many amazing, fantastic players that have experience in different leagues, that have experience on the high levels, you know. And they've got a great coach now as well. So they've got everything. Their sport director is amazing. Their coach is amazing. Their team is amazing. This season is honestly that season where I'm thinking they, they're definitely going to get champ. Definitely. I think they're definitely going to get Champions League. And definitely going to get fourth spot. And anything higher than that is possible. Anything higher than that except first place is possible. So... Schalke looks dangerous. Schalke looks dangerous in my opinion. They look really, really dangerous. Now the three key players, not, like I said, not key players, but just players that I'm keeping an eye out are Naldo. Like I said, amazing signing. I know he's getting old, but he is still one of the best defenders in the Bundesliga. Amazing signing. 
And they've just signed him. You're from Wolfsburg, who they've spent money and money and money here, money there. And Schalke did just sign, uh, they just signed Wolfsburg's captain. Like, yeah, come play for us. Come, come play for us, man. Come play for us. And he just, he just went, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna play for you. So they've signed, they've signed Naldo, who I think is gonna be a huge addition. Him and uh, Hivides are gonna be amazing to see together. I'm gonna be really looking out for, uh, really looking forward to that. Next up, you have obviously Mbolo, who has looked fantastic. You know, in the Euros, he looked fantastic. Before that, he was fantastic. You know, every club was rumored with him. I I was watching him a lot of the time just because I thought that maybe we would get him that was like two seasons ago before we got Coleman um, because I thought he would be the talent that we'd go for next but that wasn't the case but he still looks really good I am um, I, I, I really do rate him quite highly for a young talent I'm not gonna rate him quite highly overall but for a young player I do rate him really highly um, next up you have Goretzka who is basically the next to Balak you know defending attacking passing he's got it all he's got it all long range shots he's got it all he is he is dangerous he's a young balak i mean he could, he's been nicknamed that for like the longest now and it's pretty much true he's, he's pretty much true right his play style is the same as balak he behaves like balak he is balak 2.0 goretzka and those so like i said those three are my key players to look out for naldo um naldo embolo and goretzka now obviously they have the likes of guys as well they have the likes of um that they have the likes of Koke as well. They've got a lot of players. Like I said, they signed a lot of players this summer, and they just look—they just look fantastic. They honestly—they just look fantastic, and I f do feel that they're gonna be one to look out for. I do feel they're gonna be one to you know really keep an eye on. They're not gonna be the other team that normally you look at. Normally you look at Schalke and you're just like, yeah, you know, they're, they're a difficult team, but you know, not that difficult. You know, they're not. They're not. They're not. They're not, they're not they're not, they're not Leverkusen, they're not, they're not Dortmund, you know, they're not the team where you go to and you're like, okay, we could actually lose this one. You're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll beat them or we draw against them, but yeah, we're not going to lose. Yeah, but this season, it could be different. This season, it could honestly be different because I think that the, the additions that I've made, not just in terms of players, but also in terms of staff, they're going to be re they're going to be a difficult nut to crack. Next up, next up, next up, we have Bayern München. Borussia Dortmund, Bayer Leverkusen, Leverkusen, Dortmund, München. Who's number three? Who's number three? Number three is Bayer Leverkusen. Number three is Bayer Leverkusen. Um, and like I said, I'm putting up number three, but I think they can easily make it to number two as well. I think they could. Yeah, I think Schalke could easily make it to number two. Like I said, I think the second, third, and fourth position. Are pretty interchangeable. I think you could put them, or you could put any of them in the other spots, and they wouldn't look out of place, whatever. But for me, Leverkusen, um, they're gonna be like one or two points behind Dortmund this season. One or two points behind Dortmund. And I'm putting myself out there right now. I'm putting this out there right now. So if I'm wrong, you know, you guys have it. You got, you guys can just go back to the scene and say, "Ha, you were wrong." But I'm saying this right now. Leverkusen, they've made fantastic additions. They've already had a fantastic team. The young players that they've had have now grown, so you've got the perfect mix, and you've got an amazing coach. So now you've got the perfect mix. You've got a striker that can score. You've got players. You've got defenders that can defend. You've got a keeper that can keep. You've got everything. You've got you know you've got the whole package. The only thing that you're lacking, or the only thing that you have been lacking the whole time, has been the mentality. It has been the mentality, and I just think that the reason why they lack the mentality is because the players are young. Um, every season they've got they've looked better and better and better and better and this season could potentially be the season where they'll put they put us you know they put a stamp on the third place and they'll be like no we're not gonna go too far behind Dortmund we're not gonna be too far behind uh, Bayern we're gonna be right here right in the middle of things and whenever any of you slip up we're gonna take your spot ultimately I think that's the season is gonna be their season where they're gonna look really dangerous um, but then again you're always looking at Leverkusen Leverkusen is going to Leverkusen. Leverkusen is going to Leverkusen. That means when the pressure is on, they will crumble. Well, when when they need to play good, you know, or when they really need a result, they'll play well but won't get the result. That's just the way it is with them. 
Um, but yeah, I've, like I said, I think third place is like the perfect place for them. Now the three players I'm looking out for are Chicharito. Last season, he was pretty fantastic. Like, let's be realistic here. He was pretty fantastic. I might not be his biggest fan, but he was pretty fantastic last season. He looked really well. He's got a lot of goals. So now this season, you know, with his partnership with Bellarabi, with Volant there as well, you have a lot of you know, additions and you have a lot of players on the wings and on the midfield and whatnot. That they can they can look really really good. Um, so for me, you know. Chicharito is going to be a key player. Now in defence you have obviously Ta, who I still want at Bayern. I'm not going to deny that I really want Ta at Bayern. I just think that he is the future. He's got it all. He's got heading. He's good aerially. He's good on the ball. He's good defending. He knows how to you know, keep position. He knows when to move up. He knows when to drop back. He's for me, he's a perfect defender. He's a perfect young defender. Only thing that he needs now is consistency and playing against like, the highest level of opposition, which, you know, with Leverkusen he's going to get because they're in the Champions League. So, um, give it a year or two and he's going to be one of the top defenders in the world. But right now, I'd still want him at Bayern. I'd still want him at Bayern. That's just my take though. But Ty is also another player I'm going to look out for. And the next one is Voland. Um, Voland. Um, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to see how he really works out because you look, you're thinking, where can he play? You can play on the wings, you can play as a striker, you can play as the second striker. So where are you going to play him? You know, he's just seen his preferred position. It's going to be quite interesting and I'm just going to see how it turns out, how it works out. So I'm gonna be, it's going to be quite interesting to see how that turns out. Um, so that's why I'm keeping an eye on Volan. Not so much because I think I'm going to expect great things from him, but much more because I'm just more interested in how he's going to fit in, how he's going to play. You know, just overall, you know, how he's going to add um, a stamp on Leverkusen's game ultimately, or if he was just brought in and never going to play, or if he's going to play constantly. Now, all these kind of factors that I'm going to look forward to. But next up, number two, no, second place, we have Dortmund. Yes, I think that we are going to be first. Haha. <laughs> Uh, Dortmund is going to be second. I've seen a lot of people say that Dortmund is perhaps going to be first, that we're going to slip up. Ancelotti's league record. I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later when I'm talking about us. But Dortmund, let's look at Dortmund, right? Now, for me, the problem with Dortmund has been this: um, they have sold a lot of players. They have, you know, selling one key player a season. That's fine. You, you can always get, you can always, you know, get one key player. You can always replace one key player. They lost Götze, Mkhitaryan. He wasn't fantastic, but it worked. They lost Lewandowski. Technically, Aubameyang became his replacement, but obviously they bought someone else as well. They bought Jerry Mobley, but you no, know, you can replace one player. They lost Kagawa. They replaced him. They lost this. They replaced him. They lost him. They replaced him. But when you lose three key players, and perhaps probably your most important player, which for me was Gundogan. For me, Gundogan was probably their most important player. Um, if you lose your three most important, I know Kaga, I know, sorry, I know Mkhitaryan had the best stats, but for me, Gundogan was the most influential player. And if you lose three of them, Mkhitaryan, Gundogan, and Hummels, you're losing a backbone. You're losing a backbone, and you know, replacing them with youngsters. I've called, I've called a transfer window a bad transfer window. A lot of people have called a transfer window a good transfer window. Ultimately. It depends. It depends. It depends. And that's why I'm not putting that much hope into Dortmund doing that way. I think they're going to be second, but I think they're going to be stumbling across the finishing line. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, they've got the, you can't replace key players with younger players. You're putting, first of all, you're putting too much pressure on the young players. And second of all, you, you don't replace quality with talent. You replace quality with quality. So for me, they're going to be second. Um, maybe in the future, you know, you can think about, you know, they could think about a title challenge, but not this season. Not this season. I think this season is going to be, you know, with so many additions in the team as well. Not just defend, not just offensively, but also defensively. You're looking at, you know, you're looking at trouble. You're looking at players not really fitting in. Maybe the first three or four weeks they're going to be struggling, and by that time, you know, if you lose a three or four, if you lose in the first three or four weeks, if you lose three, four games, it's over. You're looking at all the title race so already. So. Yeah, it's, it's going to be quite difficult. It's going to be quite difficult for them. But the three key players that I have gotten for them are Dembele. Um, I think he's just such a fantastic player. Honestly, I, I've seen him a lot you know, last season because uh, there were a lot of rumours from him, uh, linking us with him. So I've watched a lot of Dembele. I've watched a lot of Dembele for Dortmund as well. And he has looked absolutely, he's looked absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Next up... Uh, Socrates, who I think has been the best defender for the past two or three seasons. He's just a rock solid defender. And honestly, I, I'm, I'm, it's going to be quite interesting to see how he partners up with Bartra. But um, yeah, he's a fantastic defender. And last but not least, you have Götze. 
Guts. Why am I putting Guts there? Why am I not putting Weigel there? Why am I not putting Aubameyang there? Royce there? You know what? What's uh? Why am I not putting Schmelter there? Guerrero? Why, why, why am I putting Guts there? You know why? Why? Why is not Kagawa? Why? Why not anyone else? This is why. Guts has to prove himself. Guts this season, he has to prove himself, and that's why you know Guts hasn't been bad for us. The only problem for him was that he rarely fit into the system. Now, Topol may play a similar system, but he doesn't play the exact same system. And uh, that's what I think Guts is gonna do fantastically well on the Tuchel. And I think that he might actually be able to reach his peak again, which was probably 2011, not 2012, I put, I'd say probably 2011. So if he can reach that kind of level again, he's gonna be amazing. He's gonna be amazing. And I'm a little bit scared of that. I'm a little bit scared of that. Just a tiny little bit scared of that. But another, coo another few players that I'm gonna look out for are more, because I've I've watched him and I, honestly, I, I feel he's got everything. I feel he's got everything except the final ball. And if he can just work on that, you know, I think he's going to be one of the best players in the world. Yeah, I'm putting it out there. Emre Moore, I think he's going to be one of the best players. Just because he's got that kind of, I, I don't know what to call it, evasiveness, ev evasiveness that, you know, it doesn't matter how many players are in front of him, he will still get away from you. Kind of like Costa on his best day, but Emre Moore, he's just... Because he's so small in his frame of mind, he can literally, he just, he has that kind of ability that, you know, you look at and you're like, what's going on here? Um, but yeah, I, I never, I was, Emre Moore, I'm keeping my eye on him as well. And then you have the usual suspects, um, Young, Royce, and Kagawa, and all the rest of them. But yeah, that doesn't matter. Anyway, first place. Ladies and gentlemen. First place. Bayern. Thank you. Easy. 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 Um, no, we're not going to finish easy. But um, I think this season, yeah, a, lot of, a lot of speculation has been made about Carlo Ancelotti. Is he the right man? Can he do it? You know, uh, he, his league record is terrible. Can he win the Bundesliga? You now, when you have a league record, when you've been at top clubs for decades, uh, not decades, a decade plus, um, then you know, and you don't have that many league titles at all. You, you, you're looking kind of shaky. You're looking at shaky ground here, bro. But. Um, can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it, Ancelotti? That's the question. That's the big question on everyone's mind. Nobody doubts you on your cup competitions, but everyone is worried about the league competition. Now, a lot, a lot of it is made that you know he doesn't rotate much. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do any leagues. He doesn't do that. You know, he doesn't do this. And I'm just saying, just wait. You know, he's a top coach. We've got the squad. We've got the squad quality. Why would he not rotate? You know, we, we've got the players. That can win games. Why would he not? You know, why would he not attack to win? Why, why, why would he not play to win? You know, all these kind of factors. I'm saying we're gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna win the league. I just think the quality of a squad is just that high that you know it's gonna be very difficult for us not to win the league because even when we rotate six or seven players, we still have the quality of the squad. You know, the, the squad quality won't decrease by that much if at any at all. So we've got the kind of players that can play anywhere. We've got we've got flexible players. We've got players that. You know, can play any positions. We've got players. We've got so many players that, as well, on you know the the squad side, uh, that normally sit on the bench that can come in, and the squad won't decrease in quality at all. So for for me, we just have that much quality, too much quality, and that's why I don't see us losing the league. I do think it's going to be pretty close, similar like last season, but um, yeah, I, I still don't see us losing the league this season. Next, um, the three players I'm keeping an eye out are Vidal. I think that's pretty obvious. I kind of mentioned that for me, he's going to be more. He's going to be the most interesting player to watch, uh, just because Ancelotti always wanted him, and now he's got him. And yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to see how how Vidal plays for under Ancelotti. Next up, Neuer. Um, I think that's a bit given. Last season he was he had a pretty poor season for his standards, but you know this season he should be back to traditional goalkeeping, and I think that's where he ultimately is best at. And maybe not the best for the highlights, but ultimately best at just for the defense because that obviously gives the defense more assurance. The defense is going to look better, the goalkeeper is going to look better, and overall we're going to concede less goals if that's even possible. <laughs> and last but not least, Lewandowski. Lewandowski, um, yeah, very interesting guy, a very interesting player. And obviously, last season being the best in his career, he's gonna do this similar season. This season, he's already he's already started this season with a hat trick. So I'm I'm not complaining here whatsoever. I'm gonna look forward to seeing how he plays under Ancelotti. Yay! But that's my thoughts. Obviously, um, there are a few players that I do keep out for on our side as well, which is Renato Sancho. I'm really looking forward to him. Hummels, you know, I'm really looking forward to him. 
and Coleman. I'm really looking forward to him. You have the likes of Kimmich as well, who I'm looking forward to as well, just not as much as the attackers or other midfielders, just because they add that kind of spark and flair. Whereas Kimmich, you know, you watch Kimmich and he's very assured, you know, he's very good. He's a I like Kimmich, all right. I like Kimmich. Don't get me wrong, but he, I'm not. I'm not gonna look out for him actively because I know what he can do. Whereas with Coleman, you know, as a, as, a, as an attacker, especially on a new coach, that's gonna be quite interesting. Renato Sanchez, obviously, he's a new player, and Hummels, he's a new player as well. So I'm gonna look out for what they can do, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that is just my thoughts, and my chair is sinking and sinking. I probably, I was I probably started the video when I was up here, and now I'm the, all the way down here. But that's just the way it is. That's my thoughts on the Bundesliga table. That's my thoughts on who's going to be first, who's going to be 18th, who's going to be 17th, who's going to be second, who's going to be third, 16th, and so on. But ladies and gentlemen, as usual, this was me as I'm going to be. You can rate, comment, favorite, subscribe, and peace out, and have a nice day. Bye.